coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to another episode of Just Calvin. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Just Calvin. I am here with uh, Logan Simmering, who is running for Cincinnati uh, City Council. Uh, which district are you running in? I don't think uh, it's Cincinnati, a... Cincinnati does not actually have districts. It's that large. Oh, really? Coming to you. Everybody's I'm running for the entire city. Ohio. Oh, okay. Welcome so you and... Uh, another episode. Okay. Hey, I, I just I guess that it was, uh, <laughs> I run for the same position. <laughs> yeah, one of the same nine positions. Oh, interesting. Okay. And uh, according to your website, uh, you're a socialist, libertarian, or libertarian socialist? Yep. Uh, what does that uh, what does that mean? Sorry. <laughs> just so people don't know. That's it for this episode uh, of Just Calvin. Means, uh, building freedom through our connections with other people. Uh, in practice, you know, think cooperatives, unions, and uh, town meetings. Okay, so okay, so basically, it's it's, it's combining what libertarians stand for with what socialists stand for. Essentially, uh, libertarian right. actually originally referred to the socialist end of things. It was then kind of co-opted in the fifties. Oh, okay. Uh, right, libertarians. Oh, so that's, that's a whole. Okay. That's a whole thing. Yeah. Sounds like it. Okay. Uh, so on your website, you're for justice. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Uh, I think it's not confronting inequality. Excuse me. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, we have this whole plethora of structural inequalities around race and gender and sexuality and class, and they all need to be addressed. Uh, a lot of it can be addressed by empowering people and sort of taking back power from the ruling class. And that's kind of what I want to do. Okay, well, sounds good on that one. Uh, I did see uh, you participate in a uh, housing and quality type of uh, forum uh, a few weeks ago, I want to say. And uh, there was talk of the city not having the money for uh, for housing or new housing developments or like some type of effect. I was, uh, uh, but interestingly enough, throughout the whole conversation, I didn't hear anybody uh, talk about um, like how much the uh, how much how much the city could afford. Didn't put a number on it. Just said we can't afford it. So I was trying to figure. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out if you knew. Uh, uh, at what point uh, if there would be how much could the city put towards, let's say, uh, buying a, a piece of property or pieces of property and turning it into a Section 8 type housing? Uh, the city actually already owns quite a, the city slash the county already owns quite a bit of property that we could turn towards those ends. And there's a lot of sort of abandoned and disused property that could be seized fairly cheaply. Actually, building things is. Uh, obviously a little more expensive just because building costs are very high. Yeah. Uh, the figure that tends to go around is $50 million a year. That was what the uh, initiative that failed this year to fund our unfunded uh, housing trust fund is. And there's a, there are a variety of funding mechanisms that are sort of waiting in the wings that can be activated that are the powers that be don't want to activate because they're don't take uh, housing affordability seriously. Mm. Uh, the city, like the city owns a railroad, we could redirect the uh, income from that towards housing. Uh, we used to have a tax on stock options that we could re-implement. Uh, right. We spend a lot more than we need to on the police. We could redirect some of that towards housing. Uh, would that be and what so you call it? So on. Yeah. Uh, would, would you? Uh, would that be a uh, capital gains tax? Uh, it's similar, it's different. I haven't looked a huge amount into the details of our old tax, but, you know, we have yeah. a fairly, fairly strong, you know, financial sec uh, center in Cincinnati, and a lot of people get paid in stock options, so it would be a tax on those. Mm. Okay. Uh, and how many of those, uh, would you, would you think that, uh, implementing a policy that would retrofit those same uh, uh, idle houses that the city already owns that can uh, be transferred into what uh, Section 8 type housing. Uh, uh, huh? 
uh, I'm not actually a big fan of Section 8 because it functions largely as a, a, a subsidy for landlords. I, mean, I would prefer more uh, direct uh, social housing owned by the, by the city's housing authority or uh, community land trusts, which are owned by community groups. But Okay. Okay. I will, well, uh, let me rephrase it then. Uh, low income type housing. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I'm currently residing in a uh, Section 8 type housing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, no, uh, the, the question was, uh, would the city, do you think, would be able to uh, give uh, the low-income uh, uh, housing uh, community uh, subsidies to be able to retrofit solar panels and all that to uh, to help save on electricity? Do you think that... Absolutely. You- Absolutely. And in fact, uh, one other thing I want to do is... Um, God, I don't know what that is. Uh, is establish a city utility, a city owned utility that would, as one aspect, um, sort of pay people to install uh, solar panels on roofs, which would then feed into the city's electric grid. Hmm. And uh, I'm guessing it, I believe it says on your website uh, that your iron, uh, that your iron worker uh, union, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming that those type of jobs would go towards uh, union jobs, uh, union companies types. Yeah, as much as can be guaranteed in the limits of the law. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what would be the uh, minimum wage you want to see in Cincinnati? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. I said, what minimum wage amount would you want to see implemented in a, the, the city of Cincinnati? So system, cities in Ohio are actually uh, prevented from setting their own minimum wages. Uh, but as far as city contracts go, at a minimum, it would have to be $15 an hour. Uh, preferably, I'd like to move that up towards uh, what's considered a, would be considered a living wage up here, which is $22, $24 an hour, something like that. Okay, so uh, if uh, the, big, the, uh, the bill of big fat by the Biden's proposal, uh, he said, I, I believe he said that he wanted to uh, require all uh, uh, federal employees that, for subcontractors to be paid 15 bucks an hour. Would that uh, coincide with, uh, with the trinkle dies, I, I guess, to states that hire uh, subcontractors to do uh, city uh, employment as well? Uh, I don't think it would legally be required to, but certainly I would push the remain congruent with that hmm. okay to meet or exceed it hmm. and uh what, what what would you call a sustainable and uh and livable uh, environment in regards to Cincinnati and how could you uh help to implement that uh so a big thing I want to do is sort of push on uh walkability and cyclability and density within the city we have a lot of space which is not being utilized well, which is dangerous to walk on and cycle on, barely uh, car-centric, lots of parking lots that don't really need to be there. Hmm. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a fair, a lot of like, you know, ground sites that need to be remediated and, you know, places where people live that are overly polluted that also need to be remediated. You know, so stream that runs down the middle of the city called Mill Creek mm. that needs a lot of attention. Mm. Uh, like, uh, like what? As as, uh, just as far as get it, cleaning up uh, pollution, make sure there aren't uh, pollutants going into it anymore. Hmm. Uh, yeah. oh, it sorry. runs through largely industrial areas and it needs to be cleaned up hmm. badly. Um, and as I mentioned before, I want to establish a city on electric utility that would be focused on renewables. The goal being to get the city entire, that was just like stuff owned by the government, but, but the entire city carbon neutral by 2035 at the Apple's latest, mm-hmm. as well as uh, pushing for more uh, urban agroecology, uh, food forests and community gardens to the be a little more self-sustaining and uh, as far as food production goes and just have more greenery in our daily lives so we're less alienated from nature and just initiatives like that okay 
Uh, what what is the um, uh, prices of uh, pr- uh, produce over there? Like, uh, have prices gone up a lot uh, there, or they've gone up a little, not uh, extremely bad yet, as far as I've seen. Uh, I feel like uh, supply chain disruptions here have been mostly uh, uh, shortages of processed goods. Oh. As uh, far as I've seen. Uh, like what? Uh, like, I don't know. There were big sections of the freezer uh, sections uh been empty last time I was at the grocery store. Uh, diet soda is very hard to come by or has been all since last year. Uh, in some, some cases, it might be a good thing, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's different things like that. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, what is the uh, population of Green Party members there uh, as it stands right now? Population of what? Uh, Green Party members. Uh, they had, I think, around a thousand ish in the city. Mm. Uh, the, uh, before the party lost its ballot access and similar numbers to what was on uh, the Hawkins campaign like contact list in the city uh, itself around a thousand in the county probably double that uh, what, what, uh, what do you think caused the um, the uh, the balloting I guess of the Green Party do you think it was a uh, August campaign, uh, states, stuff like that? I think, I mean, I think the Trump years were just hard on third parties. People, yeah, became very afraid of taking that chance. Mm. So, <laughs> so, so, do, so do the 2018 Senate campaign just wasn't mm. able to get over that hump. Yeah. Uh, does the Green Party uh, uh, participate in a lot of uh, union uh, type like strikes and stuff like that, you know, to show uh, the Green Party supports? It has not historically that I've been aware of, uh, but we're just starting up a labor caucus in the Ohio Green Party. Oh, what? So, uh, oh, labor caucus. Labor caucus. Okay. So uh, we'll be a little more involved in that in the future. Okay. So, uh, so you're, you're involved in the labor caucus part? Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a good idea as far as the yes, park goes. Uh, let's see. Every level they I think that's uh, what, what you were referring to when you say democ- uh, d- democracy and empowering all citizens. <clears throat> so, in the city, we have uh, these community councils, mm-hmm. which are effectively a nonprofit that the city recognizes to sort of represent the community and gives a little bit of money. I'd like to kind of clarify that relationship a little more in the um, city charter with a particular goal being to establish a system of participatory budgeting where the city's budget is drafted you know in a collaborative fashion through the upwards from those councils Mm. and also to establish community control of the police where several councils in a district would come together elect a board, maybe maybe use sortition to establish policies over the police over policing. Yeah, and, the and al- Go ahead. And also yeah, you know, other powers that can be the would be you know, effectively devolved to the community councils. I have some ideas, but the specifics I want to sort of develop collaboratively with them before launching that initiative to amend the charter. Mm. And also to give uh Is she ever gonna come into Democratic community groups, more power to, you know, power and capital to develop the city on their own terms as far as, you know, building housing and commercial space, things like that. And to uh, foster the growth of worker cooperatives so that you know, democracy is built into our work lives. And, uh, do you think that uh, the police uh, don't, don't have enough uh, training in regards to mentally handicapped or um, those kind of situations where a, uh, a counselor might be better than an officer? Oh yeah, for sure. There are lots of situations where the police are not the appropriate response. So uh, we what, def- definitely want to look at, you know, 
moving resources into deploying the appropriate kind of person for for a given uh, crisis and also the resources to prevent crises from coming up in the first place. Uh, would you happen to know if there's enough uh, money that is going into currently the uh, police department to be able to allocate some of that uh, into that kind of service? I believe so. You have believe so? A very generously funded police department. Oh, okay. So uh, you would, uh, you would, instead of not necessarily defunding the police, but uh, re reallocating some of the funds to mental health providers uh, for those kind of situations. Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure because I, 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 I asked a, a, a fellow candidate of yours the same question. Uh, uh, they said uh, that uh, they would much rather they want to see more more police officers than and also to provide some uh, extra money for for mental health providers as well. So I was trying to see. Okay, and I don't see eye to eye on the police. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's all good though. Uh, but I see. Um, and. Uh, what are you doing uh, to uh, try to get like open primaries and uh, ranked choice voting in uh, Cincinnati? Because if in order to get a third party to be viable, I say uh, open primaries have to be like the main electoral system, uh, along with ranked choice voting being the catalyst behind that. Uh, do you agree with that? And uh, what are yeah, you doing I mean, to? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I definitely advocate for ranked choice voting. Uh, ben involved here and there with a uh, ranked choice ohio uh, somewhere there's a video they took of me explaining it <laughs> what ranked choice is <laughs> well i mean uh, uh, do, do you think that uh having open primaries would allow more uh like green parties to be able to have a region to be balloted i mean ohio has a primary system is interesting in that uh you can you know pull whatever ballot you want in a primary, and then you're just registered with that party. I mean, so it's if, kind I mean, of quasi open as it is. Well, not necessarily. If the Green Party got thrown off of the like Columbus uh, ballot, because I, uh, in my case, I tried to vote for Howie Hawkins at the presidential one, but the uh, my, my ballot was undeliverable. Undeliverable. Right. There we go. Sorry, new dentures. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that that's that tells me that open primaries are not a thing here in Ohio. So that's why I was asking as far as upward goes. Yeah. I mean, usually open primary refers to like anybody of any party being in a vote in a party's primary. So that wouldn't really help with balloting anyway or the strength of the Green Party. It would just help with like sort of uh, less partisan Democrats or, De or Republicans. But I'm not, I mean, I'm not opposed to open primaries. I just don't see it as a big uh, benefit to third parties. Mm. I, would look, I would look elsewhere. Okay. Well, I mean, what, uh, what would you do to fix that, uh, fix that sort of thing, other than try to get more uh, Green Party involved or more members? Uh, the main thing would be that if I were, you know, in the position of the Secretary of State or State Legislature, it would be to have lower signature requirements for getting on the ballot lower vote thresholds for being a part a balloted party things of that nature okay uh well that'll do it for for today uh i'd like to thank you for uh for allowing me to interview you uh again i'm sorry that we kind of missed meet you as far as uh, or both forgot very much in regards to the earlier interview uh so I'll, <laughs> thank you for rejoining me today and uh, hopefully we can do this That's again okay. and hopefully uh next time we talk you'll uh, be on it you'll be in, in the position you're fighting for. Yeah, hopefully. And you, uh, right, have a good day. Uh, you too. Bye. Yep.